Hey everyone, what's up, what's up? How are you? So I am here, I'm at home with the puppies. Check this out. Everyone's here. And I wanted to take some time to, I've been getting a lot of questions about metabolic typing. And one of the questions that I often get is, um, what are the questions like? What are the questions like? And you know, what kind of questions do you get asked? So I actually wanted to share my screen and uh, hey, Jennifer, I wanted to share uh, what the actual assessment looks like because you can't actually see it till you purchase it. And so I wanted to go ahead and, and give you just a little view of what it looks like. Hey girl, all right, so if you're ready, have you done metabolic typing, Jennifer? Have you done it before? All right, so are you ready? Okay, so I'm gonna flip my phone and when you decide to purchase, if you decide to purchase metabolic typing, the assessment, the link will automatically appear and then you you should set aside about 30 minutes or so where you can you can think, you can feel, you can focus to fill out the questionnaire. Okay, so I'm gonna flip my screen. And that is our sleeping dog. All right, so you get the questionnaire, okay? So that is, and it says the advanced metabolic typing assessment. That means that this is the professional version. It's very important for you to understand that because the professional version, that's why you're paying $150. Not only do you get the professional version, which is available to you only through a certified metabolic typing advisor, and Sagi's also a clinical nutritionist and a functional medicine practitioner. And so this is the assessment, and this is the official, the most accurate method of determining your metabolic type, and this is available throughout the world, okay? So step one, you just fill out information and there's a way, hey Natalie, stick around Natalie because I would love to bring you on the on the screen and share about your experience with metabolic typing um, if you don't mind and if you're available. It doesn't matter if you look crazy, you know, sometimes I know I walk around like with my crazy hair and stuff. All right, so you fill out your information, this is completely private, and then um, you go ahead and you take uh, the assessment. Okay, so there are different sections, right? There are your physical, hey John, there are your physical traits. So people always ask, how can a questionnaire um, be used to determine your metabolic type? Now this is a, a, an advanced software that was developed by uh, Bill Walcott and it works on pattern recognition. So I'll show you, I'm gonna go quickly by it because it asks you different questions, okay? Based on different, I don't see, I'm not the expert, so I can't tell you exactly, but okay, physical traits, for example. I'll go back to the questions. I just want you to say diet-related traits, psychological traits, and then stuff about your teeth. It's okay if you don't know what your blood type is. I know mine is O something, okay? And then you submit your form. So now let's go back and look at some of the physical traits, all right? So what is it asking you? So for example, if I were to do this, I'm gonna do a little bit with you, okay? And then you can see there are some things that you might not know how to answer, like build. Maybe some of you have been overweight your entire life, so, you know, you might not know what you look like, you know, if you were to be at your ideal weight, okay? So if I were to answer this, I would say that I would have, at my ideal weight, I am my ideal weight right now, I would say I have an average build, like I'm not, I am lean, but I don't know if I'm wiry or thin, like I'm not a very, I am thin, but I'm not wiry, okay? Cellulite, if you accumulate cellulite, where do you accumulate it? For me, definitely my lower hips and buttocks. How about for you? Okay, some people accumulate um, cellulite in their upper arms. That's definitely not me, okay? Um, cellulite main area, so buttocks and my saddlebags. Okay, when you gain weight, where do you usually gain weight? 
okay some people they gain weight just around the waist like they get these big old love handles right and some people like gain weight in the upper back and some people below the waist for me when i gain weight i accumulate weight everywhere in my body just like i just get fat overall okay um all right so some of those are the questions and then you have questions for specifically for women um and if you don't know some of the questions or the answers to the questions, it's okay to skip them, right? It's totally okay. So my body shape at my ideal weight is, let's see, not fat, but full figured, strong, sturdy. I carry more mass above than below the waist. Mm, no. Lean, slender, fine bone, graceful, good balance of mass. Yeah. All right. Maybe that's that. Slim with curvy hips and rear upper body noticeably smaller than the lower body. No. Do I appear childlike, underdeveloped? No. So I'm naturally slim and sl slender, okay? At my ideal weight, I wouldn't have known that. Okay, so then you answer these questions and then you have a small section for men. Okay, this is super interesting. Your eyes, appearance, all right, do you have a wide eye, wide awake look and or eyes that protrude? Do you have an average look to the eyes or do you have a dreamy look and eyes appear deep set? Let me show you my eyes, you guys. Dreamy eyes. See, my eyes, I'm always like dreamy looking and they, you know, they go down and um, yeah, they just look, you know, they, they look like sleepy eyes. And so that would be my answer, right? Uh, blinking. One of the questions is blinking. Go long time without blinking or often stare. That's not me. Um, average blinking activity. Okay, you guys tell me, do I blink a lot? <laughs> I think I blink a lot. Hold on. Now I'm like blinking a lot. <laughs> do I blink a lot? I think I blink normal. Okay, so I would say I have average blinking activity. So I'm going to do that. Itching eyes. Yeah. Occasionally, I get blinking, I mean, scratchy eyes. Hold on a second. I'm going to keep showing you this. Okay. Um, eyes tend to be dry. Yeah, they do tend to be dry. Yes, you don't want to skip the whole questionnaire, Jennifer, but if there's some things that you're like, I really don't know. Puffiness around the eyes. Yeah, I tend to have that. Okay, I have been to an ophthalmologist and they told me that I absolutely have huge irises. And so you just look in the mirror and you answer that, okay? You know what, I should just freaking do this with you guys and then see what my results are. All right, I can do this afterwards. I haven't taken my test. You know what, it's time for me to retest. I took it in November. All right, are my eyebrows thick, heavy, or busty? Average eyebrows, thin, light, and scanty? What do you guys say? Eyebrows. I think they're average, average eyebrow growth. I mean, I plucked the hell out of them, right? But I think they're average. Facial features, tend toward angelic, delicate, and finely chiseled features, no. Are they big, large, and heavy features? No, I think that they're average, okay? My head shape tends towards that long, elongated, with a slender, thin, or narrow face, average shape face, I have a more squarish face. Definitely, I have a long face, okay? My mouth, do I have um, bleeding gums? I used to, I do not anymore. My gums, are they bright, medium, or light? Guys, then you gotta look in the mirror. I don't know. What is this? Bright, red, or pink in color, or are they medium pink color? What would you say? Sorry, this is gross. I think they're average pink color, medium pink color. I think they're medium pink color. All right, guys, so you get the idea. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. It asks questions about your skin, if you tend to have dandruff, stuff like that. It asks questions of, did I? Oh, I totally missed this before. Digestion, like, do you burp a lot? How's your poop? How often do you poop? Do you tend to get stomach aches? Um, do you feel thirsty often? Your elimination, oh, there is the pooping part. Like, what is the color of your poop? How many bowel movements do you have each day? Um, 
you know, you should be pooping several times a day. I am still a little bit constipated. You know, if I go every other day when my husband's like, why didn't you tell me? I'm like, cause I don't want to talk about my poop every time. Um, you know, just ask things about your poop, things about your reflexes. Like, do you have a gag reflex? It's average. Do you tend to have fast reflexes? I think I feel like I tend to have slow reflexes. Um, I do not, I'm kind of insensitive to pain. I have a strong threshold. Um, light really bothers me and um, I'm very sensitive to noises, okay? And that all these things, we don't have to know how to interpret them. This is why the creator created this of, and then, um, you know, why the, the software is able to recognize patterns and so as a result, you would get your, um, your test, okay? So anyway, you finish answering these questions, psychological traits, I like this, okay? So do you like being in charge? Yup. Um, disagreement, rather give in than argue a point. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I like standing my ground. Yeah, I don't wanna be right all the time. Sometimes when people say stupid things, I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, exercise makes me feel good. I love it. Uh, loose ends are absolutely upsetting to me. Makes me freaking crazy. Punctual. And this is what you're going to find out if you're answering like me is that you're, um, you're a sympathetic type. And so you're like, go, go, go. I'm definitely an overachiever. I am quite ambitious. I have a high drive and motivation. This is who I am. And there are people that are completely the opposite and that's okay. All right. And then you, they ask you questions about like angering and you know, how attentive you are to details. I'm horrible with details. And do you communicate clearly? Um, what is just things about your personality? Okay. So that is that. Do you guys have any questions about that? And then you go ahead, you fill this out, then you go ahead and you submit your form. I'm going to go ahead and submit it. Okay. So then there, it tells me that there are mistakes because I didn't finish submitting it properly. Okay, so now let's say I did my test and I found out that I am a mixed oxidizer dominant, okay? So you are going to, hold on a second, let me see if I can pull that up. Do you guys have any questions? This is good, right? Because I think there's just so many questions sometimes about, um, I think sometimes there's so many questions about, uh, ooh, I'm looking, looking, looking. Um, about what the actual process is, and I totally understand. Oh, let's see. Be patient with me. What am I doing? Where is this thing? I'm trying something different, you guys. Ah! And you know what, the reports, if you've taken this a long time ago, okay, I'm just gonna show you the part of my report. I'm not gonna show you the whole shebang, um, but it is an extensive report. You really get what you pay for. And so I'm gonna show you the part where it tells you, okay, so that's my that's the next thing that I'm gonna show you, Sarah, okay? So you get a report that, that First of all, you receive an email and the email is like, hey, you know, thank you for taking the metabolic typing exam. Here's a quick start video. This is how you want to start. Because some of the things that people say a lot, it's like, oh, I feel overwhelmed. And you're overwhelmed because you're receiving a lot of information, but you are not going to, you're not required to um, understand how it works immediately. You know, you have to, you have to go through the steps. Okay, so you test for your metabolic type so that you can find out what the best foods are for your metabolic type and also what ratios are best for you, okay? So I'm gonna show you part of the, my test, okay? The, the, my test is, a, is, is extensive. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into like a, the whole thing. I'm just gonna show you my plan, all right? So here it is. Okay, so I find out that I'm a mixed oxidizer dominant, okay? That is my type. There are, I wanna say there are 12 types, maybe nine types, I don't remember right now. 
But again, I'm not pretending to be an expert. I'm just a user of, you know, I do this myself, right? So, okay, these are the foods that are best for my metabolic type. And I've talked to you guys about this in the past where let's say, you know, uh, your, your ancestors all come from Greece, right? And um, your type is whatever, 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 whatever foods are available in Greece. Those are the, in Greece, those are the right foods for you. So olives, you know, uh, certain kinds of fish, certain kinds of vegetables, whatever was available in that region. So those are the vegetables and those are the kinds of foods that are going to be best for you. There are a na there is a native people or there are these native peoples in Africa where their diet consists of fruits and berries and um, they would fall under a different metabolic type and so you know not not there's no such thing as the perfect vegetable for everyone so I hate to break it to you the test is one hundred and fifty dollars and this again this is the professional version of the test. You know, this whole craze with celery juice that people are doing. Let's see if celery's in my in my metabolic type. This is a great thing. All right. These are the vegetables that are best for me and my metabolic type. Check this out, you guys. I'm not even like I don't see any celery. I don't know if you guys see celery. Oh, there it is. Okay, so good. I can have celery. Okay. Sorry. Come here, Corey. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, we got we got some people working in the house. Okay, Corey. Sorry. Okay! Okay, let me move rooms. <clears throat> this is the way it is for us. Come on, everyone. Come on, doggy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sorry, guys. I know. LOL dog life, especially with the little ones. They're such freaking barkers. The big one doesn't bark because he knows who he is. You know what I mean? All right, so let me. Okay, so let me switch it back. So look at that. So celery is actually on my list and I'm able to have celery, right? But there are some people, there are some types that won't have celery. So why is it that some people benefit from, you know, uh, having celery and some people don't? Or like, oh, ginger's so good for you. Well, ginger's not good for everyone. It just depends on your metabolic type. So these are the foods that are best for me, okay? So if you scroll down, it's gonna tell you how we do best. For people that are my type, I'm gonna scroll down here. I don't wanna overwhelm you with stuff. Hold on a second. All right, this is what you get, and not everybody is like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up another type so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you guys can read this. As a mixed oxidizer, you want to plan your meals using the following guidelines. Okay, so my metabolic type, I'm pretty balanced. My metabolic type does best on a diet that is balanced between carbs, fats, carbohydrates. Okay, and so some people are gonna do better when they have other types like fast oxidizers, they're gonna do better when they have high protein. And it's okay if you're a vegetarian, you could just choose from your list, right? But for me, I want a, a good balance of carbs, protein, and fats, okay? This is not gonna work for everyone. And so for people that have different needs, they are going to want to have higher fat, lower fat, uh, higher fat, higher protein. There's no way for you to guess. And this is why so many of you guys are so freaking frustrated because you're guessing 
And so your question, your question, hold on a second. Okay, so let me, your question is, so the ones in yellow in ones are the ones that are not good for you? No, that's not what it means. It just means that the ones in yellow are higher in starch. And then you have to see how you feel having more starchy foods. So the foods in yellow are higher in starch. So for example, I have Hashimoto's disease or whatever you call it. I can't have stuff with wheat or gluten. And so most of these things I won't have, like none of this, it's on my list. I'm allowed to eat them according to my metabolic type, but I take in my own issues into consideration. And so I just don't have those things, okay? So as a mixed oxidizer, some of these are in green, some of these are in purple. And that's because they tell you that you want to have a good mixture of these. So you don't just want to eat foods from the purple list or foods from the green list. You're, you want to make sure that you're getting enough nutrients from all these different types of vegetables. So, so for some of you guys who are eating, um, I mean, for those of you guys who are eating, you know, the same thing every single day and you're so proud of that, how simple you are, you're probably missing really important nutrients. And I used to be like that. I'd be like, oh no, I can eat the same thing every day. I'm good. But that's actually not good for you. You want to have a variety of vegetables. And that's part of the reason why I started juicing too, so that I can get more nutrients from, from my vegetables, okay? So some things that I didn't know um, about my metabolic type, hold on, I wanna be able to show you something, hold on. Hold on. All right, no, there's nothing. Okay, would you guys like to see what, um, what, what someone with a high protein diet looks like? Okay, what that would look like. So let me see if I have it up here. I have, I must have it here. I need to eat soon too. Is this awesome or what? Metabolic typing, I got so many things. Oh, shush doggies. Hold on, I'm looking. Is this interesting for you guys? MT diet, I'm looking in my friggin' million notes and stuff. Oh, I found it. Um, don't quote me. I feel like there are nine types, but I could be totally wrong. All right, let me see, hold on a second. Fast oxidizer, all right, let me pull this one up. Okay, so I don't know much about a fast oxidizer because I'm not a fast oxidizer, but um, the people, okay, I might, and again, like, I might, I might not be completely correct, but there are some people, you know how, like, everyone, it seems like it's a little bit less, you know how, like, everyone was on the keto phase, or they're still on the keto phase, and they're like, oh my god, keto, 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 well, guess what, um, keto might be great for some people, it really might be, but not for others, it would be terrible for me, because I'm someone that does best when I have a balanced diet, not high protein, high fat. So let's see what this fast oxidizer diet is like. So hold on. Okay. Some of you will get your results and then you'll see that you're a fast oxidizer dominant. So let's look at some of the vegetables and we're gonna see what this type, how this type does with, um, with, with their ratios, okay? Corey, enough. Freaking doggies. Okay, thank you for protecting us. All right, so let's see if you were in the celery juice phase, craze, whatever you call it. All right, I don't see any celery juice here. What? Celery. I'm looking. Help me see if you find any. Okay, how freaking awesome is that? I'm so glad I showed you this because I don't see any celery. So... You know, for all of you guys who are like, oh my God, everyone's doing the celery thing, unless I'm blind. Oh, there it is. Okay, it is there. All right. They can have celery. They can have celery, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going, yep, thank you so much. I see it, I see it. All right, now I am determined to find out if, um, if there's celery for everybody, okay? But you can see there are different vegetables for different people, okay? But again, just because, you know, celery benefits some people doesn't mean that um, 
that it's going to be benefit everyone. And look at what it says here, limit to occasional. Okay, so I don't know. Again, this is not my type, so I'm not that familiar with it, but there are some things that you should limit to occasional. And then let's move down to see how the fast oxidizer does, does best. Oh my God, this is basically keto, right? Like as close to keto. I know nothing about keto and ketones and all that stuff. Like I don't want to know. It's not my type. I don't care, okay? It's okay, Letitia. You know, you, you try different things and, you know, you might discover great. But the beautiful thing is that with metabolic typing, you don't need to be doing fads like that. You know, and again, I juice. I juice, you guys, um, because I like the benefits. But I'm not going to juice just with celery. All right, so look at this, right? The fast oxidizer, which is the quote-unquote protein type, does best on a diet that is generally lower in carbohydrates higher in fats, higher in proteins, emphasize the heavier proteins, higher in fat and purine. So you actually want to eat more fat. You want protein that has more fat and more purine. Let's go back to the list up there and look at this. You, this is your protein section. This is, you want to eat foods that are higher on the list, okay? Ugh, organ meats, pate, brains, buffalo. I would freaking die. I would die. I couldn't do it, okay? I, I just couldn't freaking do it. Some people are doing, like Natalie, I don't know if you're still on. You are eating liver pate and loving it. Ugh, it makes me gag. You just think about it. Um, so what if you're a vegetarian? Well, guess what? You are going to have to go and check here to see, see that whole section that I'm highlighting. Those are some of your protein options as a vegetarian, Okay, so as, and then there's one more thing that I want to show you guys, and I don't know if I can find it right now. I don't want to keep you on forever, but okay, so then there are other guidelines here that tell you things that are specific to you, you know, and your particular protein type. Okay, I'm actually not going to do another thing because I don't want to keep you on forever, um, and I need to eat, and then I'm going to take the dog to training. So, um... So that is metabolic typing, you guys. And the actual metabolic typing program is much more than what I just showed you, right? There are different phases, and some of the phases include, um, you know, things like cleaning up your house and talking about and, and using natural cleaning products, um, surrounding yourself with certain type of plants, avoiding certain type of plants in your house, um, using products that are you know uh, good for the environment, good for your your skin, your hair, your makeup. Um, you know, I stopped. I, I did dye my hair. I'm using a product that is less chemically. I do use Botox. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I do have implants. Like I, you know, I, I would make a different decision if I were gonna do it again in terms of my implants. But I have them. I'm not gonna take them out. Um, my point is that I'm doing things now to live the best life that I possibly can while still living in the 21st century. Like I still do dye my hair, but I make better choices. I do use natural makeup. I use a company called Beauty Counter. They're awesome. I use uh, shampoo by Beauty Counter and by Inner Sense, another company that um, ranks really highly. I stopped using nail polish, but um, for like four months. And I think I'm gonna do my nails because I have an event to go to this weekend. And so I'm not, I'm not trying to win any kind of award about being a saint and the cleanest person and whatever. I'm just trying to do these things for my health. And I eat as best as I can for my metabolic type so that I can feel the best because when you feel your best, you are able to rock this life. And that's ultimately, that's what we want. Like, of course we want, um, you know, we do, we live in a world where we want to look good and that's okay. You know, you want to look good. You want to feel good. You want to feel feel good, you want to feel vibrant, you want to live a full life. And that's what metabolic typing um, allows you to do. You know, we just live in this modern world and in this modern age where they, there are so many toxins, there are so many chemicals, there are so much processed foods out there. And there are so, so much, there's so much confusing information. And metabolic typing is, is, is trustworthy. So, all right, the web, Sagi's website is down. We don't know what the heck is going on. They are 
on the problem. Let me see if it's back up. I don't think it was back up. So I'm going to go ahead and it says our site is under construction. What the heck? We don't know what's going on. But I'm going to go ahead and post the link if you're interested in, in getting it because um, so you can you can get started. Hold on a second. Let me let me let me do it. OK, I'll grab it and then I'll post it for you guys. If you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer. Oh, Kimberly, you do have a question. Uh, do you take medication for Hashimoto's? Yes. And I am not someone that like is on, you know, like I, I, I. I tested for high RF factor, so rheumatoid factor, and I went to the doctor and the rheumatologist tried to give me all these prescriptions and we threw them in the garbage, you know, because you really need to treat the root cause. That said, I have a low thyroid and so I do have a medication, I forgot what it's called, like lyothyroxine or something like that, that the doctor compounds. And I take that every day because it makes me feel good and if I don't take it, I don't feel well. And so I'm not anti-drug. I'm just not um, of that mindset that you should drug yourself for every little thing. I, I believe that we need to get to the root cause. And I think, don't get me started, I think Western medicine, traditional medicine, allopathic medicine, um, you know, they, they, they're doing, I don't believe that the doctors are ill-intentioned. I believe that they, you know, they've been taught, oh, you have a stomach ache, take this pill, you know, or take this syrup, you have a headache, take this pill. So I don't, that's not what I believe. I believe that, I'll give you an example, I had, I've been having, I was having headaches, I did the food sensitivities testing, it turns out that I'm sensitive, my body's sensitive to almonds, I was eating almonds every day. So that was causing inflammation in my body, inflammation, headaches, anxiety. And so I stopped eating almonds and I stopped having headaches. My anxiety is cut by 90%. Yesterday, there was a dessert on the table that had almonds and I ate it and I had a headache. And I was like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? I knew better. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and post this video. I'll post the link with you. And then if you have any questions, I'm super duper happy to answer. Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye.